Howdy modelers, this is your old buddy Brian here uh, with another episode of Boss Builds where if you've been following along you know I've been working on the uh, Fujimi 172nd scale uh, JG SDF Japan Ground Self-Defense Force Type 10 Main Battle Tank. Uh, as you've been following along you've seen it's a great little kit. Uh, we actually got it built in the first couple of episodes but I've been taking my time and painting it and getting it to this stage here. Now if you saw the last episode uh, you saw that all the detail painting was done. Actually, last episode, I think I was talking about cases and whatever, because I actually hadn't done anything on the model. But this time I have. Uh, last time we talked, I think I said I was going to maybe put a gloss coat on it and uh, do some washing um, and then do some weathering uh, on top of that. But uh, I decided to forego the gloss coat. Uh, one reason I didn't put a gloss coat on there uh, is because I wanted to tone down the the color on the whole thing and if I'd have put a gloss coat on there it would have uh, the, the black wash would have essentially just gone into the dark places or the uh, low the um, panel lines uh, the recessed areas uh, and then it wouldn't really have stuck well to the glossy areas so I wanted to keep the matte finish of the original base coat um, to give it a darker look uh, and I think, as I've mentioned before, when you do that on top of a matte coat, uh, as the wash dries, we'll explain what a wash is more in detail in a minute, uh, you get these kind of, don't know if you can see in the camera here, you get kind of high tide marks as the, the thinner dries and it leaves little platches of the, the black paint here and there. Uh, sometimes that turns out looking okay, and I'm looking at this here, um, it looks quite dirty. Uh, and as you can see, it's all settled into the recesses uh, and the nooks and crannies of the model. Um, so if you compare this to how this model looked last time, it looks, even at this stage, I've only put one wash on here. Uh, it looks a lot more realistic. Uh, it's, it has a lot more depth to it as, you know, uh, filling in the, the low areas with dark uh, will do. Uh, so this has been washed. I washed it once last night uh, and I used enamel. Uh, now, I know I've been blathering on ever since we started talking about this model that uh, you should not put uh, enamels on top of acrylics, but that's what I did because you have to know the rules to break them. Don't forget that. Um, and you have to be careful too. Uh, I, I have this screwed onto the base so I can't really show you, uh, but I did some testing on the bottom of the model using the enamel thinner based black wash that I used, and if you scrub on it, the paint will come off, so the key is not to scrub. Uh, now wash. What is a wash? I think as we discussed a little bit before, a, you can make a wash using a thinner. Now this is uh, Tamiya's X20 enamel thinner and unfortunately again I have to remind you guys that we can't ship these overseas uh, but it is available overseas uh, but think about us uh, when you're using it and your old buddy Brian told you about it. Uh, and this is enamel flat black. Now if you recall from the earlier episodes I used the same bottle of flat black to um, prime the whole tank. Well, I'm using it again to make the wash. So I used uh, a bit of the X20 thinner here and a couple drops uh, of the flat black, just enough to make it uh, dark, you know, so it's not uh, a complete black type paint. Uh, wash means you just sort of wash it over the model and it doesn't cover it in color, uh, but again it settles into the nooks and crannies. So I don't know what the percentages would be, <clears throat> but uh, you know, you can just exp experiment on your own. Pour a little bit of this into a cup or whatever and then just dro add drops of the flat black until you get a consistency that looks good. I always test it on something other than the model I'm working on uh, to see if it's got a good consistency for what I want to use. So we have flat black and X20 thinner. Now what I actually also used was a new product by Tamiya, which unfortunately we also can't sell. Uh, it's called Panel Line Accent Color Black. Uh, now what this is, is exactly just this put together, but you want it in a nice handy bottle, uh, there it is. So I actually used a conju uh, conjunction of these. Now this is already pre-thinned uh, to a much thicker consistency than you'd want to use for just a, a straight wash, um, but it is good for panel lines, and I used it uh, in some spots here just testing to see uh, how it would work, and again it's pretty heavy. So what you have to do with this is put it on the panel lines you want, wait for it to dry, uh, and then use thinner again, wipe it off. Now I'm a little bit afraid of doing that on the, uh, over the acrylics because it might wipe off all the paint. Uh, this would be great to use on top of a lacquer based paint or whatever that uh, this 
enamel thinner would have no effect on. Now this is useful because if you've noticed, this bottle might look familiar to you. This is the same bottle Tamiya packages their uh, extra thin cement in. So I'm going to try to open this without splashing it everywhere, as I think I did last night on my workbench. Uh, it's got a wee tiny pointy little brush, kind of pointy, little brush in here. Not really pointy, but it does the work. Uh, and you can use that to get into the panels and kind of slosh it in there. You can't really get a pinpoint application into the panel line, uh, but as I mentioned before, if you have a, a gloss coat on the model, uh, if you just touch this panel line wash to one edge of it, it'll wick right down due to some scientific term which I can't remember. It's not osmosis, whatever. Well, you guys who've been in the science class more recently than I have will know what that is. Um, viscosity? No, I don't know. Anyway, consult your science teacher. Uh, but it'll wick right down into those uh, crevices and uh, easy to do. And in that, when it does that, you don't really have to worry about going back and wiping the surface off because it stays in the little trenches or the engraved surfaces. Uh, but where you touch it, there's a little blob there and you kind of have to wipe off. So this is what I used so far, uh, a combination of these things, which this is exactly. Uh, so enamel based. Now, what I did is just, again, mixed a little bit of that in a little hair here, uh, into the a cup that I had, a little plastic cup. I uh, got it to the consistency I wanted, and I don't have it here, but I used a very soft, uh, round, large brush, and just dipped it in, and very gently applied it to the surface. I had the turret off at the time. Um, with, and so without scrubbing or dragging too much on it, just liberally applied it uh, to all the surfaces of the model. And as I mentioned before, I didn't want to scrub it because I was afraid that the enamel thinner would uh, go through the acrylic paint. And as I said, I did try that on the bottom just to see how it would work. And yeah, if you scrub it pretty good, uh, the paint will come off. So be careful when you're using an enamel wash on top of acrylic paints. Uh, but as you can see here, I think it turned at this stage of the game. It's looking pretty good. Um, I'm probably going to go back through and maybe using a, a lightly dampened with enamel thinner cotton swab and uh, try to lessen some of the high tide lines I can see on here, although they really don't look that bad. It looks, it's looking pretty natural. I'm always worried about having an unnatural look on those things. Um, other things I'm definitely going to do are I'm going to go back with the original base colors, uh, the, the green and the brown. Uh, if you remember correctly, they were uh, the Tamiya acrylic paints. Uh, in those two GA type colors, and I'm going to dry brush over the respective colors on here. Uh, now that's not really to get a dirty weathering effect so much as to sort of uh, make the highlights pop out a little bit more. And just do very light dry brushing with that. Uh, and just refresh your memory if you don't know what dry brushing is, that's where you take a, a short bristled flat brush and load a little paint onto it and then wipe most of the paint off uh, and then slowly or lightly drag it across the surfaces so you just catch the raised portions of the model. And uh, that gives a, sort of a natural impression of, uh, again, highs and lows, light and dark. The wash has created the dark in the nooks and crannies and valleys. And going back and dry brushing on top of that with the base colors, uh, which will now appear lighter than this because this is darkened by the black, uh, should make the, it pop out and give it even more depth and dimension. Um, and then from that point, then I will actually start applying more, more dirt, particularly around the, the lower extremities here, the wheels, the running gear, the tracks. Uh, I'll be using Tamiya Dark Earth and various lightenings and darkenings of that uh, around the bottom. Uh, and then probably not too much dirt on the top, um, but I will definitely finish it off with a light misting of Tamiya Buff. Buff is a good color to use to get nice dusty effects. So sort of holding it like this, I'll just dust a very, very thin coat of um, Tamiya Buff on top to give it a nice look. Uh, and then after that, it'll be one final coat of uh, a flat coating to give it a totally matte finish. Uh, and then that'll be it, and we'll be good to go. Uh, as you can see here, one, one of the effects you get from using an enamel wash is uh, you've got some sort of shiny areas on here. Um, just a permutation of using it and the way it dried, the way it leaves the paint uh, that was in the thinner on there. Uh, particularly, you can see on the, the rubber skirts here, it's got some shiny areas there. Uh, and again, I'm hoping that's all going to even out when I apply the final uh, flat coat. Uh, another shiny area I don't like right here is the canvas boot on the, gun, the main gun there. 
uh, the paint I used on that turned out to be quite shiny. So uh, hopefully when I use the final flat coat, that'll all be knocked down to a dead flat. You want your tanks to be, well, I do anyway. I don't know if you do, but I want my tanks to be a dead flat color because uh, they just looks more natural like that. In this scale, anything that's shiny um, tends to look kind of toy-like. So we're trying to avoid that. Uh, I think the rear end turned out really good if you get a close-up on that. Uh, there's a lot of um, depth and nooks and crannies and detail back there that held the wash really well and to give it a pretty good effect. And as you can see sort of here, I told you I really didn't take much care in painting the black rim, the black wheel or tires on the metal rims on the road wheels. And um, even with just this one application of a wash, it kind of evened all that out. So you can't really tell much of a problem there. And once I get uh, some, uh, you know, a, a modicum of mud and dirt on there, it'll be even less noticeable. Uh, so it's taken a long time. If you've been following along, what are we up to? Episode nine? I can't recall. It's been so long, but I'm having a good time doing it. I hope you guys are enjoying it too. Guys and girls out there building your tanks. Um, so next time you see me will probably be after the holidays, if I remember correctly. And my goodness, I hope I'm done with this little guy then. Uh, so I can show you the final product. I'll do something with this base too, as you, we talked about last time. I've got this little clear case base here. That's quite nice. Um, I'll probably paint this. I don't know if I'll put any terrain on it or maybe go the simple route and make like a little street, bit of street on there just so it looks a little more realistic, but uh, just something to make an appealing display uh, and also keeps it nice and safe. So I uh, hope everyone out there, wherever you are, has happy holidays and um, I will see you after the holiday break, hopefully with this guy finished and uh, we'll talk about some other cool modeling things when I get back. So see you next time.